Hey, good evening. This is Mayor Valensky with Driving Markets. Okay, so I want to give you a little bit of background as to what are non-farm payrolls. Okay, so non-farm payrolls or NFP or non-farms uh, or, pay, or pay, farm payrolls is a measure of unemployment in the US. Okay, it comes out at the beginning or the first Friday of every month. Okay, so the non-farm payrolls, NFPs, are effectively the measure of employment numbers released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, okay, the BLS in the States, and there gives you a measure of the employment and unemployment in the US. It measures all sectors apart from agricultural or farmers or farm workers, okay. There are a few government offices that are not included in that number, but this is a major lead indicator or major indicator as to where the US economy is going. Now generally around that number before and after it comes out at 8.30 US time in the morning, 08.30, there's a lot of volatility in financial markets, on equity markets and on foreign exchange markets. Um, generally if the number is good then the markets rise because it shows a strong economy. So over the last few years where the non-farm payrolls have been going up and up and up, especially since the corona pandemic, where unemployment reached super high levels in the US. Since the end of the pandemic, then, that, and then employment has become more and more complete and unemployment has dropped to practically all-time low levels. And that is a sign of a strong economy. So the financial markets would react on those numbers positively because it shows a growing good economy. Today, in today's age, since 2022, the numbers have been deemed that if, this, if they're a strong number, then that is um, seen as a negative response because what they're concerned with is that the US Federal Reserve, the central bank there, will continue raising interest rates if it's a strong number because full employment is one of the agitations of increased inflation. So it's a bit of a paradox. Previously a strong number has pushed the markets higher. However, recently a strong number has pushed financial markets lower because of the fear of increasing in interest rates. Now, um, yesterday on Friday the, um, came out the non-farm payrolls which were 261,000 jobs created in the US and that was higher than expected. However, the US markets went higher, which is unusual in 2022. And the reason, the reason why they went higher on the back of those non-farm payrolls is because there, there's another fear that the economy might go into recession. So if it goes into recession, that's a bad thing. So what you've got effectively is you've got a lot of uncertainty in financial markets regarding these essential economic indicators, and economic numbers. Now, the non-farm payrolls yesterday normally, on 2022, would have sent the market down. However, they sent the markets up because what the investors and the traders and the analysts looked at say, wow, the, UK, the US economy is, I keep saying UK, apologies, but the US economy is resilient, it's strong, and therefore can withstand the recent interest rate rises. If it can withstand the recent interest rate rises, that must be bullish for the market, so they push the market up. Now, there isn't going to be a recession as long as there is full employment. And this again is a paradox, it's unusual when a situation whereby you've got full employment, higher interest rates, and consumer spending is more or less stable. It has been up and down, but it's more or less stable. So you won't have a recession with full employment. However, you may get higher inflation because as long as there's full employment and as long as there's demand for workers, then what's likely to happen is that um, corporations, retailers, wholesalers, producers are going to either maintain the prices or push the prices higher. And then also in this full employment, you're going to have the employee or the consumer having regular salary coming in and is going to go out and buy the goods and that's going to push inflation up 
because at the moment in this year what well, you've got you've got a supply issue regarding um, getting goods to the shops and getting goods to the retailer so when there's a shortage of supply with full employment and a high demand for those goods that's going to push inflation further and what's going to happen is now is that inflation is likely to rise much higher in the US I'm focusing on the US because I'm talking about the non-farm payrolls and employment numbers and the inflation is likely to rise higher and the Fed now is likely to get even more hawkish on interest rates however the market saw that not necessarily as a negative yesterday they saw that as an okay we can tolerate higher interest rate rises because there's full employment they were really worried about recession now when the non-farm payrolls come out at 8:30 US time the um, the impact on that will be on the dollar and obviously on equity markets well equity markets went up or should go up if the number is strong and the dollar yesterday went down because when the, when there is a, a movement to move into high risk assets which is shares or cryptos then the dollar is sold off because the dollar is seen as a safe currency and a safe haven and a stable um, home to put your money in the event of uncertainty so the dollar was sold off the dollar went down the other major currencies which is the Swiss franc the pound the yen the euro went up and as a result of that um, what happened was the equity markets went up because um, dollar assets became cheaper because the dollar had gone down so the non-farm payroll in summary is a major lead indicator comes out on the first Friday of the month it gives you a very good impression of where the US economy is going regarding uh, growth and employment and as long as that number is strong then it's unlikely that the US would go into recession so that's really the summary of non-farm payrolls what I'd like to do going forward is probably introduce a series of economic numbers and economic fundamental terms so that you can learn from it and you can actually understand what is going on and the impact it has on financial markets I hope you enjoyed this video you can contact me subscribe to it um, you can um, pass a comment I also have a channel on Instagram called uh, driving markets so that these I do on a daily basis have a good evening